Buckingham Palace. Just saying the name probably makes you think of royalty, right? <laughs> but let's get real. There's a lot more to this place than just being a fancy address. The palace, worth an astounding five billion dollars, is a mix of stunning architecture and interiors so fancy, they'll make your jaw drop. Now, I know what you're thinking. It's just another one of those stuffy old buildings, right? Wrong? Buckingham Palace is living, and it's still in the game. Playing host to King Charles and all his royal engagements, it's a place where the past meets the present, all wrapped up in one seriously impressive package. Welcome to Old Money Lives, where we explore the lives and homes of those beyond our normal reach. The Architectural Grandeur Buckingham Palace is probably the most well-known royal residence today. However, it didn't start this way. Rather, back in 1703, it was just a townhouse for the Duke of Buckingham. Imagine that. From a single house to the massive palace we know today. <laughs> King George III bought it in 1761 for Queen Charlotte, calling it the Queen's House. Pretty modest name for what was to become the epicenter of British royalty. Fast forward to the 19th century. Architects John Nash and Edward Bloor got their hands on it, adding three wings around a central courtyard. These guys basically transformed it into the palace we recognize now. But it wasn't all smooth sailing. Nash went a bit over budget. Okay, a lot over budget. And he got himself fired. <laughs> Classic case of royal ambition meeting the harsh reality of accounting. The palace's look we're all familiar with, especially that famous balcony where the royal family waves to the crowd, came about in the late 19th and early 20th centuries. That balcony. It's part of the East Front, added in the early 20th century. And it's where those iconic royal family moments happen. Oh, and during World War II, the palace wasn't spared by the bombings. It got hit and showed that the royals were in it with the people enduring the same dangers. Oh. So, from a duke's house to a bombed wartime residence to the Queen's official home. Buckingham Palace has seen it all. But history isn't the only upper hand this palace has over its counterparts. The Lavish Interiors Buckingham Palace is actually much more about that grandeur and those big events. Let's start with the basics, though. The palace isn't just any old house, it's got 775 rooms. Yep, you heard me right. Among these 775 rooms, the state rooms are where the royals host their gatherings. What makes them extraordinary, though, is the fact that they are decked out with the treasures from the royal collection, including masterpieces by Van Dyck and Canaletto. Not to mention some of the finest English and French furniture you can lay your grubby mitts on. Now, to the throne room. It's as majestic as it sounds. This is where the royals have their official photos taken like the Duke and Duchess of Cambridge did for their wedding. It's got this dramatic arch and canopy over the thrones. They were designed by John Nash, who was big on making a statement. Then there's the white drawing room, which is probably the grandest of them all. It's like the royal family's fancy living room where they hang out before big events. And let's not forget the music room where the royal babies get christened, with a floor that's a work of art in itself. The picture gallery is another highlight filled with some of the greatest paintings in the royal collection. It's a long room where the walls are adorned with works by some of the most famous artists in history. And for a bit of drama, because we know you love a bit of drama, the grand staircase will make you feel like you're in a movie. It's got portraits of the royal family all around, making it a pretty grand entrance to the state rooms. But it's not all about the fancy public spaces, no, no. The palace is also a home. The royal family has their private apartments in the North Wing, where they live away from the public eye. It's a bit more private, but you can bet it's just as grand. In addition, there are working areas such as the king's private office and conference rooms that cater to the documented daily businesses of the monarchy. 
King Charles, known for his environmental concerns, has championed sustainability efforts within the palace. Factual reports indicate that solar panels have been discreetly installed on the East Wing roof, and a combined heat and power plant helps reduce energy consumption. By the way, are you loving the royal scoop? Hit subscribe and share to fuel more royal explorations. <laughs> Your support is our crown jewel. The exteriors and gardens. It's not just the inside that's got all the glitz. The outside is pretty spectacular too. The main facade, facing the mall, is where you'll see the famous balcony which we've already discussed. The gardens, on the other hand, are a whole world of their own. We're talking about the largest private garden in the city. This place has over 350 types of flowers. A 150 meter long herbaceous border, <laughs> that's a lot of plants, and its very own lake. Yes, a lake in the middle of London. The garden is also where the Queen throws her garden parties. If you're lucky enough to get invited to one of those, you'll be one of the 50,000 guests who gets to enjoy tea and sandwiches in the most exclusive garden in the country. It's a pretty big deal in the social calendar. Trust me. And let's not forget about the changing of the guard. It's one of those must-see British traditions, and it happens right outside Buckingham Palace. It's all very ceremonial, with soldiers in their red uniforms and bearskin hats marching to the palace. <sighs> ah, London. Beautiful city. Join us next time on Old Money Lives. <laughs>